the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I'm Pastor Susan. Welcome to this service with Luther Memorial Lutheran Church on this Thanksgiving Eve 2020. I want to share with you a few things on what is going to be happening for worship in this season, as well as the plan for this service. By the way, um, I am recording at home tonight rather than at church, simply because I'm waiting for the results of a COVID test. I'm fine, but the doctor instructed me very clearly not to interact with others. So here I am frustrated, but still connected, which might be our theme for tonight. We are going to be recording videos during Advent. Now, normally in a Wednesday evening, we will be resuming our Zoom worship. So that is our normal Wednesday evening, apart from this Thanksgiving Eve. As far as Sundays in Advent and Christmas, we do plan to pre-record. And we also hope to do a couple of outdoor events, one for the children's ministry, um, in which we hope we can all participate and another um, on Christmas Eve in the afternoon, very likely in front of the church. So this is our plan for the season. One reason we chose to go with recordings is that we would like to bring in our families lighting the Advent wreath at home and incorporate, incorporate that video into our worship. Um, moving into January, we hope that we might be in a Facebook Live format to allow for a little more interaction until we can gather in person again. And we pray that you would be safe in this season. We're going to start this evening with a Thanksgiving puppet show brought to us by our own Donna Parks and I think starring some of her grandchildren. And we are going to, um, other than that, have a fairly regular online worship service. So again, welcome to worship and let's see and hear a Thanksgiving puppet show. School was terrible today. Why? There were peas in the soup at lunch. The teacher gave us tons of homework, and even the basketball was flat at recess. You had a pretty rough day. And tonight, it's my turn to help with the dishes. Hmm, it won't take long. Brady, you haven't noticed my new glasses yet. I noticed, but I think glasses look dumb. They make me look sophisticated and I like, and I think they're wonderful. How come you're always happy about everything? Because I try to be thankful about everything. But everything goes wrong for me. There's nothing to be thankful for. There's always something to be thankful for. You just have to look for it. How about homework? It helps us learn more. Washing dishes? Well, I'm thankful we have food to put on our plates, uh, it, which is what makes them need washing. And our mom cooks it for us and for water to wash dishes. Okay, okay, I get it. It's all in the way you see things. You can complain or you can be thankful. How could I be thankful when the ball was flat at recess today? You fixed it with that little pump, didn't you? Yeah. Then be thankful you didn't have to use your mouth. Oh, Sally. Brady, I think you need a pair of new glasses too. But my eyes are perfect. Oh, those should go on the inside, on your heart. Glasses on, 
your heart? That's crazy. All you ever see are things to complain about. I wish you had a special pair of glasses that would make you see things to be thankful for. I guess I could try to see things like you do. I would be like having a, that special pair of glasses and things would look better to you. You know, Sally, your new glasses don't really look, look dumb. I actually think I like those pair of glasses. And I'm going to like you you in yours new glasses too. Let us confess our sin now before God and one another. Holy one, we confess that we need new glasses. We are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. The first reading tonight is from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 7 through 18. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow from you for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know to humble you and to test you. And in the end, to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors as he is doing today. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our gospel Tonight is Luke 17, verses 11 
through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, 10 lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not 10 made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We have some interesting temptations in these scriptures. As we think about the tendency to give ourselves credit for all that we have received. And also at times our tendency to diminish the contribution of foreigners and immigrants in our land. But of course the story is the gospel story is that, that we are all immigrants or have functioned as immigrants at some time. But this is not this is not the thrust of my preaching today. It is Thanksgiving. And so it is our time to reflect upon gratitude and giving thanks. So now a true confession. My best friend my BFF has told me more than once that I'm ungrateful. Yes, me, yes, your pastor, who should be shining the light for you. And I'll admit that sometimes she's right. I have seen the glass as half empty. And that was definitely the case when I first came here. I missed my mother who had very recently died I missed my ex-boyfriend. I missed my friends in Georgia. And I missed my Massachusetts home. When COVID hit, even ministry itself seemed almost impossible. And my cup was near empty or full of something bitter and not sweet. That, the beginning of COVID, that was nine months ago now. A lot happens in nine months. It is the reproductive cycle for us humans from conception to gestation to birth. Not a bad thought as we approach Advent. From conception to gestation to birth. Some pregnancies are difficult and still come to fruition, bringing a healthy child to a healthy mother. I don't feel now the way I did last March when the pandemic hit us. I'm frustrated and I feel COVID fatigue just as I'm sure you do. And yet I have hope and confidence and I am thankful to be here with you. We have taken some hits and moved through some losses and through God, we have prevailed and shall prevail. Some of these mornings, I smile now at my family of three cats, at the pretty view through the windows of my rental home, at the thought of you, my sisters and brothers. And here we are again, experiencing Thanksgiving and Advent in much the same way we experienced Easter. COVID seems to like to hit us on the cusp 
of our favorite worship seasons, sending us home when we wanna come out, distancing us when we want to come together, closing us out of our building when we most want to come in. These are holidays like no others in our memory. In good times, our reading from Deuteronomy reminds us, we have a tendency to forget God, the source of all our peace and prosperity. We trust in ourselves. We may imagine that we have earned or deserved everything we received. This is a trap. Even for the religious, it's what I would call functional atheism. We say we believe and yet we don't honor the God who has always shown up for us. And for nine lepers in the gospel we just heard, when their luck changes, so to speak, and they are healed, they go on their way and resume their interrupted lives. If they do give thanks to God, we don't hear about it. I think it would be good to reflect for a moment upon the life of a first century leper. Not all so-called lepers would literally have had the disease we know as leprosy, but they would have been affected by some kind of skin disease, something potentially transmissible and possibly in some cases lethal. Luke tells us that they kept their distance when calling to Jesus. This would have been by law or for us, <laughs> executive order. Those who suffered from skin diseases were required to isolate themselves and could be reevaluated by the priest at intervals of seven days for signs of healing. When out in public, they would warn others of their presence, sometimes by ringing a bell. Now this might seem harsh, but as veterans of COVID and, and understanding disease in modern times, we can see perhaps the reasoning behind it and, and why the priests would have become the gatekeepers in a sense for the safety of the whole community. In those days, the Jewish people believed, and this is a little bit different perhaps, in those days, the Jewish people believed that disease and disaster were God's punishment for sin. Think of Job's comforters who insisted repeatedly that he confess his hidden sin. If he were innocent, they reasoned, why would he have been afflicted? Thus leprosy, like the coronavirus, impacted a person's life in more than one way. It induced separation and isolation and it brought judgment. The life of the leper was one of temporary or permanent ostracism. All this on top of the painful disease itself and the possible life sentence it brought or death sentence, all depending. Early on in the pandemic, I remember sharing with you a psychologist's wise word that this is not our fault. Of course, we knew that we didn't cause COVID-19. And yet, every one of us feels its impact personally and individually. We know all about the multitude of ways in which this single disease affects us. It has radically altered our lives. And that is true for all of us, whether we have ever been diagnosed with coronavirus or not. The coronavirus may have robbed us of a lot of things, yet it's also raised in us a determination to worship God, to stay connected, to claim our faith in our church. There's a vaccine on the way, but when it comes, I hope we will not forget the God who has sustained us all this time, even as we are freed from some of the restrictions we have endured. Nine lepers who were healed left immediately to go show themselves to the priest and resume their interrupted lives, perhaps joining friends and family 
from whom they had been separated. One leper started to go and then turned back, praising God and thanking Jesus who had healed him. Jesus told him, your faith has made you well. If this leper was healed by faith, what about the other nine? Were they healed in the same way? Had they not cried out to Jesus for mercy? And wasn't this an expression of faith? If so, then what would have been different for the one who returned to give thanks? I can't help thinking of others whom Jesus healed, especially in John's gospel, where the healing of a blind man took place in stages, including his own journey to wash in a pool. Some people received healing passively and others like the blind woman or like the, like the blind man or the Samaritan woman participated actively in their own healing or transformation. God gives freely just as Jesus healed all 10 lepers, whether Israelite, Galilean, Samaritan, Yet how we receive makes a difference. We live in grace, but how much more powerful is that grace when we receive it with thanksgiving, when we celebrate that although it came to us for free, we don't regard it as cheap. That's the healing that does more than eliminate illness. That's the healing that transforms lives, bringing health and wholeness. We could get through this pandemic and return to our old way of life, unchanged. We could say, thank God that's over and get on with it. Or we could reflect upon God's Holy Spirit at work in our community, bringing us together in adversity driving us into new ways of reaching out and gathering, opening our eyes to new ways of doing and being the church. You're so blessed to have that wonderful congregation, my friend would tell me. Yes, I am. This year, as we approach a Thanksgiving like no other, we are hurting and we are blessed. Where do we feel the hurt? Where do we see the blessing? Let us lift our hearts to the Lord our God. We cry for healing and we give thanks. Amen. Let us turn now to the prayers of the people, giving thanks to God our Father for all his gifts so freely bestowed upon us. For the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea, we thank you, Lord. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ, we thank you, Lord, for our daily food and drink, our homes and families and our friends. We thank you, Lord, for minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve. We thank you, Lord, for health and strength to work and leisure to rest and play. We thank you, Lord for the brave and courageous who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity. We thank you, Lord, for all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice. We thank you, Lord, for the communion of saints in all times and places. We thank you, Lord, 
For what do we give thanks? Let us take a moment for personal thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. To him be praise and glory with you, O Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Friends, having given thanks, were we gathered now in the ordinary way, we would be celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion. As we have been blessed to be able to do during our outdoor worship and during our brief time indoors in November. But we have also been graced by this prayer of spiritual communion, which we have often shared in recorded and Zoom worship services. So let us join now together in that prayer, affirming the presence of Christ in, through, and among us. Jesus, I want to receive you, and I cannot do it in the sacramental way. Therefore, I ask you to come to me and fill me with your presence, your peace, and your love. Grant me, Lord, the graces I need most, and make me one with all your faithful people everywhere. Amen. And let us pray now together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Hear now this blessing May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign, savior, and spirit be with you today and always. Amen.